What's up everybody, ArmFH here, and today I'm back with a long overdue Breath of the Wild theory. The Sheikah technology is something that a lot of people have been really confused about since even before the release of Breath of the Wild. What kind of methods would be used to create such elaborate technology? How come this technology is seemingly so difficult to build and get together? Well, while Nintendo doesn't make it particularly easy for us to figure out, they do give us some hints to how this stuff is made, and that's what I'm going to be exploring today. So, the Sheikah technology is basically ancient technology, created by the Sheikah of days long past. While there are indeed Sheikah remaining in this day and age, it's pretty obvious that technologically this tribe has indeed regressed. This is obviously due to all of the Sheikah technology being banished from Hyrule 10,000 years prior to Breath of the Wild, only to re-emerge at some point before Calamity Ganon's second coming. So, due to the fact that even the Sheikah tribe itself has stopped creating their trademark technology, I decided that it would be good to try and research it for myself. The first place I looked for clues was Robbie's lab, the Akala Ancient Tech Lab, which is the only location in the game where you can build your own tech using the Ancient Oven Cherry. However, this wasn't very helpful, as all of the parts required to build any of the ancient tech are basically nothing but ancient parts, like springs, shafts, gears, and cores. Although I was able to pull one interesting detail out of Robbie's lab. Robbie mentions that he himself was the one who built Cherry. This basically confirmed to me that the ancient tech is not something impossible for the people of Hyrule to reverse engineer. Robbie may be old, but he's not that old. He was definitely not around when the ancient Sheikah were building this tech. So that led me to a different conclusion. While it's obvious that Robbie is a researcher who likely has more knowledge than other Sheikah in this subject, the fact of the matter is, he was able to build this from scratch. The weapons and armor could probably easily be made just by throwing some old parts at them, but something like an ancient oven, a device to create weapons and armor, that's probably more difficult. So if the ancient tech is not lost to time, then why does no one build it anymore? Well, a part of it is probably that Robbie is quite tight-lipped on this kind of stuff, as the technology is very dangerous. But that alone wouldn't really be enough. In fact, to a certain degree, the shortage of Sheikah tech might just mirror a lot of technology in the real world. While the steps required to assemble it are known, at least to a select few, the actual raw materials themselves are in short supply. And what scarce material could this be? Well, we see that over in Gerudo Town, once you unlock the jewelry shop, you'll be able to purchase enchanted jewelry, each with different elemental resistances. For example, the ruby circlet has cold resistance, the sapphire circlet has heat resistance, and so on. However, the one we are most interested in right now is the diamond circlet, which has guardian resist up. This ability is only available in a few other items. Ignoring Midna's Helmet, which is a DLC item, Guardian Resist Up is only available in the three pieces of the Ancient Armor set, all items which are created by Cherry at Robbie's lab, and are all created using parts of destroyed sentries and guardians. In other words, the diamond in this circlet is acting as a replacement for the ancient parts which Robbie built. This more than likely means that the Guardians were built using diamonds as a core part, and this makes sense. While the bluish color of the Luminous Stones may be similar to that of the Sheikah Tech, comparing closely the Luminous Stones and by extension the Radiant Outfit are actually closer to a turquoise, while the Sheikah Tech uses a more pure blue. This makes a lot of sense. Diamond, as a stone, is one which refracts a lot and can output the color sent through it. It's possible that the diamonds were used in ancient tech as a sort of semiconductor, running the power to the actual control unit of this technology. Of course, after that, they put other stones in front of them to display the color to the outside of the device. Most likely, these would have been sapphires for the blue parts and amber for the orange parts. As a whole system, using diamonds as a basis for a processor isn't even a new concept. Outside of Hyrule, in the real world, this concept has recently been gaining a lot of traction, 
in the electrical field of semiconductors. The most common and accepted material used in creating semiconductors has been silicon. You've probably heard people go on about silicon chips before. However, research has been showing that using a diamond as a semiconductor is said to be faster, consume less power, and can even be thinner and weigh less. In the real world, there have been many experiments conducted attempting to mix diamond with materials such as boron or phosphorus. This is due to one of diamond's biggest issues as a semiconductor. Diamond as a semiconductor is like a top level skill in a game. While it may have some of the best stats, it also has one incredibly tough drawback, rendering it useless for majority of the game. While diamond would make a fantastic semiconductor, diamond is actually an incredibly strong insulator, stopping the electricity from flowing. However, that is probably where the ancient Sheikah were able to get ahead of us over here in the real world. The Sheikah probably discovered the method of doping the diamond of Hyrule with another element, which would allow the electrical current to pass through. If I had to bet, I would say that it would be Topaz. While mixing Topaz in the real world wouldn't be that effective, in Hyrule, Topaz has electrical properties, so it could very well work. While it's unlikely that humans will be using diamond semiconductors anytime soon to create robots of mass destruction, it's interesting to notice the similarities between the ancient technology seen in Hyrule and that of the technology here in the real world. And with that, I'm going to end the video. Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know what you think. Did you agree with me? And please, give the video a like while you're here and subscribe to the channel for more gaming guides, news, and theories. Thanks for stopping by, have a fantastic day. Peace out.